Hi, and welcome to the Build Your Own Data Logger course, presented by Wild Labs and Freak Labs. This is Module 1, Video 1, Understanding the Hardware Design Flow. This is an overview of the process that we use here at Freak Labs, and the process we'll be going through during the course. There are four main phases, proof of concept, prototype, deployment, and ongoing dev and maintenance. At proof of concept stage, we have an overall idea of the main functionality that we need. We have an idea of where the device is going to be deployed and for how long. So we're gathering all the hardware together. That could be researching and selecting the sensors, the enclosures, and designing the circuit board. Once we have the hardware, we're testing to see whether our hardware configuration is working as we expect it to, and we're starting to write the core functionality. The main point at this stage is to make sure the hardware is talking to each other in the way that we want it to, and that we can actually achieve the core functionality that we require. We want to know this before we get too deep into the design process, so this can be an iterative process. For example, can we access all the sensors via the wild logger board? Can we read the temperature and humidity sensor, read the PIR motion sensor, and can we write data to the SD card? Once we have the core functionality written, we start building a prototype that can be piloted in the field. At this stage, we're fleshing out the full application, adding functionality that's less critical, and adding optimizations to make the device more reliable and power efficient, and so on. In this course, once we're done establishing that we can control each sensor and it's behaving as we want it to, we'll be tying it all together into our data logger application and adjusting it to take the reading when we want it to. Then we'll add some finishing touches like power optimization and reliability improvements. We're deciding how the devices will be mounted and we're confirming that we've got the right enclosures. And we're also getting an idea of how much time it takes to assemble the devices. For a pilot, we usually deploy three to five devices. And we have three testing environments. In the lab environment, we're able to test how stable and reliable the system is and how accurate the sensors are. Then we have a sandbox, which is a controlled outdoor environment. Finally, we have the field test, where the environmental conditions are as similar as possible to the deployment conditions. The aim of using these three different environments is to isolate any errors that we find so that we can effectively debug them. The pilot is important because it shows us how the devices interact in the unpredictable real world. In addition, it lets us gather data that we can verify is accurate. It reveals user functionality that we hadn't thought of. It could be as simple as the position of the SD card not being as accessible as it should be. And it reveals shortcomings of the hardware we may have chosen. And this again can be an iterative process. When the device has been piloted and tested and we're confident of the data that it's able to gather and that it's stable and reliable, we move into deployment. This is when we're assembling a larger number of devices. We're sourcing larger quantities of different kinds of hardware, whether that's sensors or enclosures, and so we're checking for bulk discounts also. And we're looking to streamline the assembly process. From the pilot, we've developed a testing procedure during the assembly so we can test and verify that each device is working as it should before it goes into the field. And then during deployment, we have a similar kind of process once they're in place that we test and make sure they're working. Most importantly, we've, we have spare parts and a repair kit handy. We're also training others on how to deploy and maintain the devices. Once the devices are deployed, we go on holiday. <laughs> Just joking. There's always ongoing maintenance and troubleshooting. So similar to when we were deploying, we have a troubleshooting checklist. We make sure we have spare parts readily available and we're gathering a wish list of features for the next iteration of the device. That's it for this video. If you have questions, post them to the forums or bring them along to the fortnightly office hours. Now that we have an overview of the design process, let's go deeper into the hardware and what it's made up of.